You finally got your license, you got your desk set up, you probably got your own email account now. Now you're at a place where you can finally start taking leads. You may have probably taken leads or did an inbound call elsewhere, but when you talk about real estate, when you talk about mortgage loans, it's a different concept. It's just a completely different atmosphere. The questions you're talking about on this inbound or these intake calls around subject matters or, or topics that are not necessarily a topic or favorite topic for people to talk about because they're talking about their income, they're talking about you know their needs, their wants, they're going to express vulnerabilities that they have. Maybe they have shame on their credit score or they just simply don't like sharing personal information with strangers. And this is the challenge that we have to face in doing a typical intake call. One of the main reasons why they fail is they just simply don't perfect their ability to do an intake call properly, meaning they haven't actually refined the process and understood the overall aspect of properly engaging in a sales conversation. And that's ultimately what the intake call is, is you're having a conversation. And if you make it sound like an interrogation, like you know the inbound call comes in and you just go straight to question asking, question after question after question, it's gonna seem like an interrogation. It's gonna seem like genuinely you're doing an application. And so one of the most effective ways of engaging in a sales conversation is, is just that, it has to be a conversation. And so we already know that we have to get certain pieces of information for a proper 1003 to do a loan application. We're gonna have to discuss certain things like you know occupancy, we're gonna have to understand things like employment, annual income, hourly wage, bonus, sales, um, you know, certain things like property taxes, homeowners insurance. And this is a lot of information. But what pieces of that 1003 application are really necessary up front? You know, do we just go in order, page one, page two, page three? Um, I found that if you go in order and you sound too robotic, it's not gonna be really a sales conversation. So you really have to, to think about the application as an interview. More or less, you're interviewing the prospect. The funny thing is that the prospect's gonna look at it the same way. They're interviewing you on whether or not to hire you for the job or gonna buy from your company or buy your services or buy your product. And so when going into the intake call or the sales conversation, remember that um, there are a few things you really need to pay attention to. And one of the most important things is that the prospect has no idea of your experience. They have no idea of who you are individually. They might be familiar with your company, but they don't know you. They don't know you as a person. They don't know your understanding, your experience, your life experience, let alone your job experience. And this is something you need to remember through every single conversation because you will engage with prospects who are downright demeaning, they're belittling, they're rude, they're gonna say very offensive things. And if you forget that they have no idea who you are, you're gonna to forget to realize that they're not talking to you directly. So going into uh, you know, sales conversations and going into an intake call is easy for me because I've done it several thousands and hundreds of thousands of times throughout the course of my career. And now it, it's easy to me because I have thick skin. I've been able to create a process that I play with within that sales conversation. And I say playing because I've always looked at sales origination as a game. It's a game kind of like a puzzle, right? Like I have to figure out my way through this maze in order to get to the exit, which is the completed sale. And through these mazes, through experience, I've realized that if I went this way, it's a dead end. If I went this way, it's a dead end. If I went this way, I'm gonna reach probably a farther distance. But if I went this direction, then I'd probably get to the sale much faster. But I wouldn't know that all those routes exist per se if I didn't continue to want to master my craft, if I didn't continue to practice. And so in this module, I'm gonna share with you some key steps that's enabled me to become very great at doing the initial sales intake or the sales conversation. And it's enabled me to gain trust. It's enabled me to build rapport in a far different way. And the key, number one, is you have to understand that they have no idea of who you are. They have no idea of the actual process. They might have an, an idea of what might entail within the sales conversation, but they won't truly know what the process is. And this is an advantage to you because you're the one who's going to control that conversation. Now, in my experience, I've seen a lot of sales agents, those that I oversee and, and just me personally going through the conversation so many times, I've found a lot of dead ends. And typically a lot of dead ends happen because we choose to 
address details at the very beginning of the sales conversation. Meaning that at the very beginning, you know, when I do my intro, and we're, when you do your intro, you're probably gonna reach prospects who are just gonna speak over you. They're gonna wanna rush you. You're gonna hear a lot of noise in the background. You're gonna, you're, they're probably gonna say things like, hey, I don't wanna give you any information, just tell me what your rate is. And uh, I gotta go, you know, and, and, and this is something that we're gonna meet up time and time again. So get very used to that. That's just something that is just part of sales. No matter what, you're always going to find a client who can give resistance. Very few times will you run into a prospect who just doesn't want to shop. They just want to get the answer and get it done. This is the dude that has a lot of things to do on their checklist and, and shopping for a mortgage and speaking to salesmen probably isn't their most favorite thing. So when we as sales representatives go into a sales conversation, typically what holds us back is we're so concerned about what's gonna happen later in the conversation, meaning we're assessing right from the very beginning if this person's gonna buy. So we're starting to judge them based on their questions. We're starting to judge them based on their tonality. We're starting to judge them based on certain characteristics of their loan program, their loan amount, their property type, their county, their last name. And so there's a lot of things that can really deteriorate our motivation to fulfill and complete that, that application. But every single sale that we make within our career is gonna start with an application. It's gonna start with a sales conversation. The sales conversation is the most important piece because you figure out what the overall goal is, what the want is from our prospect. So the real challenge is how can I extract the correct information or enough information so that I can properly communicate a solution in order to help this prospect. And that's all they want. They just want help. They want answers. Any inquiry is just that. It's an inquiry. They're inquiring to learn more about your product. They're inquiring to learn more about your service. And this is the advantage that you have is you're the subject matter expert. No matter if you're a novice, no matter if you're a rookie, no matter if you're new to the industry, you're still the expert in your prospect's eyes. And there will be times where they'll ask you questions that you may not necessarily know the answer to, but you have the resources. So if that happens, I'm gonna give you a quick tip. If that ever does happen and they ask you questions that, that you just don't know the answer to, my recommendation is you do not just give them any answer. Don't just tell them something that sounds good because that, that question or the answer can come up later in the process and they'll remember. There's a thing about prospects. They got good memory for some reason. <laughs> and um, they, they, will, they will put you on blast. They'll bring it up to you and say, hey, but then you say this and then you're gonna be caught with your pants down. And who knows how far into the process it is. You're probably about 30 to 45 days into the process and then that truth is now uncovered it's revealed and now you've just lost the trust but more importantly you want to be genuine anytime you ever say something you're not sure about just like we read the tone of our prospects the prospect can do the same to us so they can sense a change in our in our in our tone of voice they can sense the the voice inflection when we're not confident they can even sense our aggression and so if we if you know if we get asked a question that we're not too familiar with and um, and we get asked multiple questions for that matter sometimes we can become defensive because in our head we're thinking man will he just stop asking the questions and ultimately what that means is we're just upset because we're not in control of the conversation we feel like we're being used and the more that we go down that path the more that we start feeding into our own our own illusion that we're not going to make a sale so i would say about 90 percent of the reason why sales don't happen is because the salesman is in their own way they're in their own way by not being present within the conversation meaning they're they're just on autopilot right so you might be talking to a prospect but you're looking at other things like the loan amount the county the fees the rate the name the questions and you have all these different factors that's pulling away and extracting your attention away from the actual conversation. But I'm gonna share with you in this module how to engage, how to actually stay focused on the certain things that they say. And they will tell you a mass amount of information that's going to help you create a sale. It's going to help you influence. It's going to help you understand how to persuade their decision, how to persuade them into giving you more information and how to persuade them at the end to give you that sale.